It's, it's, it's Bobby, and we back. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Purpose in the Youth podcast with your favorite bearded man, Bobe. Today on the show, we have world traveler, Dea Lurie. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm super good. Nice. I'm super excited to have you on the podcast. Thank you. Just met yesterday yeah. via Uber, so shout out to Uber. <laughs> uh, for people that are listening that might not know who you are, who is Dea Lurie today and how young is she? Yeah, I'm 20 years old. I'm a vlogger and a blogger and a a bunch of stuff photographer I have my website and all kinds of things so you're just yeah. crushing life yeah you're crushing life. a lot <laughs> where did you grow up um i grew up in los angeles okay um, la yeah. the sunny la yeah just for a little bit i lived here until i was about seven okay um and then i moved to las vegas and then i moved to texas and then i moved back to la and back to vegas so damn you were everywhere. jumping around yeah i've kind of been a lot of places why what made you jump around a lot um just we were just always moving like my mom always was moving everywhere. Okay. Um, but then high school came, and then she's like, I don't want you guys to keep switching, so I stayed in one high school. So they just kept and you yeah, there. Yeah, in Vegas, unfortunately, but yeah. Uh, it's yeah. it's got to be an interesting yeah. place to grow with all that madness there. Yeah, it You is. said we, uh, brothers and sisters? How I have many? a brother. A brother? I have one brother, yeah. Older or younger? Um, he's 22. He just okay. went into the military back in June. Nice. Yeah. What, uh, what branch? Um, Just the Air Force. Air Force. Yeah. He's two years older than you. Mm -hmm. That's the same age gap I have with my sister. That's so I'd crazy. imagine we probably had a similar yeah. <laughs> upraising of like your brother might have gave you, might have gave you shit. I did, lot, I did, I did to my sister yeah. growing up, but then we kind of got a little bit. He still holds it against me. He just holds everything against me. Yeah. yeah. Well, he has to. That's his. Yeah. That's like his responsibility. <laughs> that's like his job. Yeah. Who were you in high school? Like, did you study a lot? Were you into uh, sports? Uh, mm. I know it's a tough subject for a lot of people. <laughs> high school is a tough subject. Yeah. No, high school. I think I was really shy okay. and. I think I had like two friends, maybe they kind of were changing, but I don't know. I had one friend that I've known since like forever. I mm -hmm. think I've known her like 10 years now and we were good friends in high school, but high school, I did not pay Like, I don't want to say I paid attention a lot in high school. I really didn't. Like a lot of the times I would just sleep in class. Like I wasn't that good. <laughs> You're in the back <laughs> of the class. Your arm yeah, down. yeah, exactly. Like, I don't know how I passed high school to be honest. I'm really happy I did, but I don't know how. Yeah. I Not mean, as, I feel like with high school, as long as you aren't causing trouble, they'll, yeah. they'll make sure you kind of get through it. Yeah. And if you're in the back of the classroom sleeping, it's like, all right, yeah. like, day is just I mean, sleeping. I was like, let always kind of in trouble too, but not because I wanted to be, I think. I was just always in trouble at school. It was just like- With like, what? I was always like getting, well, I don't want to say I was getting in fights, but a lot of people didn't like me. Okay. And I was really quiet. So I, I was really nice, really quiet, but people just did not like me. What? So they would just want to like fight me all the time. And I'm like- You'd okay. have to you'd have to literally throw it down. Yeah, with them. so it was just horrible. <laughs> oh <laughs> so man, that was like my high school. That was just horrible. Damn. Yeah, I left though. That's tough. Yeah. And it probably was a little bit tougher if you're moving around so yeah. that you can't really get settled. Yeah. In the right place to surround yourself with the right people mm -hmm. or to figure out like who's yeah. my actual friend group and who do I actually yeah, like I, hanging out with. I left. Um, I think I was in Vegas when I was about nine years old or something like that. And then I left for middle school and mm -hmm. I came back for high school. So some of the friends that I originally had, I knew them when I went back to high school. Mm -hmm. It was just crazy to see like the different things that they were all doing. Like yeah. Some of them were off doing crazy stuff that they shouldn't have been. Another one, I'm still really good friends with her. Um, and she's kind of been the one that I've stayed really good friends with. Uh, even cool. though we don't do the same thing, we don't talk every day, but we're still friends. Yeah, you don't have other. to necessarily. Once you yeah, get, out, exactly. I feel like once you get out of high school, you realize, or even college, yeah. you realize like you people have to go on their own paths. Yeah. But it doesn't mean we're not friends. Yeah. Like we don't have respect for one exactly, another. Yeah. We just have to do our own thing. Yeah. What was one of the biggest struggles you faced as a kid? Uh, as a kid, I. Mm. It's a tough question. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know it can go a lot of different ways, <laughs> but I'm always curious to kind of see what people went through as a kid because yeah. a lot of things that you probably learned or went through clearly have guided you to who you are today. Yeah, I think that the biggest thing for me was like having to be in really independent for a while. So I think my mom, she was like a single mom. I only grew, grew up with her and my brother. Mm -hmm. um, my dad wasn't really in the picture, which I don't I don't mind now. Um, but she was always like working and she had us really young. She had me when she was, I think, 16 and my brother wow. when she was 14. Wow. Yeah. So, um, but she's had, she had us really young. So I know like when we were growing up, she was still kind of growing with us and like doing a bunch of like just having fun, not having fun, but yeah, she was yeah. trying to juggle like being still a kid and like grow like raising us and trying to make money to support us and things like that. Yeah. So I think that was one of the biggest things. She wasn't 
she took care of us and she made sure we had everything but a lot of the time she'll be working and like she had a hustle yeah if she's that if she was that young and then had you guys i can't even imagine like you're 18 and you have two kids yeah and you have to literally do whatever you have to do to to make ends meet yeah, so I think that was the biggest thing. And then for a while, my brother um, lived in Texas. He mm-hmm. went to a school out in Texas. He wanted to stay there. And um, yeah, I think that was like weird because then I was kind of by myself about at like 14. I was just kind of all alone, I guess. Yeah. Um, my mom was still there, but at the time I was a brat. So like we didn't get along. <laughs> I was such I love a brat. The, I yeah. love the honesty. Why? Yeah. You just like would get, give her I, shit about uh, things or? I was just doing things I wasn't supposed to be doing. Like I, I kind of. I wasn't doing anything inappropriate, but like I started having crushes on boys and things like that. So I was just like, yeah. You were chasing after them? Not really. Like a little bit, maybe. Yeah. A little bit. A little bit. (laughs) So yeah, I know I was a brat. She was, mm -mm, she hated me. And I, yeah. Were there any like uh, interests or hobbies that you were into? Um, Yeah, I did dance Dance? um, all throughout high school. And I did cheerleading too in middle school. Okay. You were doing like some crazy yeah. flips, and some <laughs> those, awesome stuff. Yeah, those were the only things um, that I actually really enjoyed about school. Those mm-hmm. are kind of the reasons I went to school is just to go to dance class and things like it that. Gives you a purpose yeah, to go exactly. to school to actually show up instead of sleeping yeah, all day yeah. in the classes. You could actually like <laughs> yeah, have to participate. Exactly. Who were some of your early mentors? Was there um, anybody that stands out the most? Could be a teacher, could be your mother, could be a family friend. I think earlier on, it was always my mom. Like, I always really looked up to her. And it was crazy because I I know I used to watch her go through things. And I think I would, like, um, I guess growing up, I would do the same things. Like, I would almost copy her. And I knew that it was going to work out. She used to tell me, like, what are you doing? Like, I've done this and it's not going to work. And I just kept doing it. Yeah. And I think now that I'm older, I kind of see, um, like whatever my mom says, if she's like, I don't like this person or if it's something I just, you listen, just listen to, her. to her. Yeah. Cause it's like, she's always been kind of the person that I've always, I guess, copied a little bit. It's your mother. Yeah. You, you're supposed to kind of copy <laughs> yeah. her. You know what yeah. I mean? But I know like in school, once I got to high school, I think some of my influences I would say are like, some of my teachers, I guess, um, yeah. I was working when I was in high school. So I was working 60 hours a week in 60? a senior year. Yeah. 60? Yeah. Six zero. Yeah. <laughs> oh my. Yeah, what so, were you doing? Um, I started off um, working at Aldo. I was okay. like selling. Well, actually, I was a cashier. And then I begged them to let me like sell. And they were like, they kept telling me no. And then all of a sudden, one day I started selling just to do it. You just said, I'm, yeah, I'm doing it. I, I don't care what anyway, you guys yeah. said. <laughs> um, and then I actually was a top seller for like four months. And so they obviously started liking me. All those, the, oh, the, that's the, the shoe, shoe, right? Store, I'm wearing yeah. the shoes as I oh, asked cool. that question. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Give me a break. That's funny. So um, I started being the top seller, and they started really liking me after that just because, obviously, I was selling a lot of stuff for them. Um, and then after that, I think I got a job as a manager. I want to say, I don't even remember. I think I was a manager at, like, um, New York and Company. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I worked there and I quit Aldo after a year and a half. Yeah. And then I was a manager there, but I was also working at BCBG. So I was always in retail, like that state earlier stage in my life. I was in retail. Yeah. Yeah. Retail is honest. I worked retail. I worked at, uh, I worked grocery store at one point, but then I yeah. went to, uh, I was selling shoes at finish line. Okay. Yeah. And that was probably one of the best jobs I ever had. Cause it taught me how to communicate with people exactly. as I'm sure that probably yeah, taught yeah. you like how to address situations. Cause people come in complaining yeah, like, yeah. that their shoes like <laughs> magically didn't fit them exactly. on, and it was our fault or that we sold them. they want to return it and the shoe's and the dirty shoe's already the scuffed. Bottom. It's like, like, I see yeah, you wore this. Exactly. Like, who are you trying to fool? You're not going to fool <laughs> exactly, me. Exactly, yeah. Um, I know I was really shy and so being in retail, you have to like, I hated it so much when people walk in the door, you have to be like, hey, how hey, are how you? Are you? Like, yeah. I don't want to do that, yeah. but it may, like it kind of made me come out of my comfort zone a little bit. It pushed you, yeah, which is good. Mm-hmm. Um, did you go to college? No, I didn't. You didn't. No, you said I don't need it. I'm no, hustling. I, I gotta never work. Never wanted to go to college, to be honest. And that's something that's so big to me, especially now that I'm traveling. I always meet people, and they're like, "Are, are you like gap year or something?" I'm like, mm-hmm. "No, I never wanted to go to school." And they're like, "Oh, like." Okay, okay. Yeah, I, I respect it. <laughs> yeah, it's so funny. I but, mean, I think we're getting to a time where. In, yeah, a lot of people are starting to maybe not go not to college. Though, they're yeah. doing their own thing uh, with social media or they're able to get like some type of traction before yeah. they even need to go. Yeah. I know that um, I wanted to do hair really bad. So that was a thing. another thing I did like on the side. Um, 
that was like one thing I was going to go to cosmetology school and then I ended up not going. But I did at some point feel pressured to go to school. Like mm -hmm. I did feel like, okay, maybe I will just go to school. But I knew it wasn't something I wanted to actually do. This yeah. was like before I was traveling. I knew it wasn't what I wanted to do. So I kind of told myself, like, I'm not going to go and spend money just to make other people happy. I was going to say, what yeah. was the pressure? Because other people were saying, like, yeah, you need to go like to you school. you should go to school. You should do this. You can learn so much. But I actually, like, learned everything I know from myself and, like, friends that I had around me and things like that. Yeah. So And YouTube is huge. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that can give you the confidence. Yeah. Everything. Just, exactly. like, paying attention to other people that are kind of doing things that you want to do. Yeah. And it's like, all right, well, if they're doing it, like, why, why do I need to do that? Yeah. Um, this year, February 2017 was a big, big yeah, month for you. You, uh, you had $1,200 to your name. Mm -hmm. You had no plan at all. Yeah. You just were eager to travel. Mm -hmm. What inspired you to, to take this leap? Um, in November of 2016, mm -hmm. um, me and my best friend were supposed to go to London together. Um, and then he ended up flaking. Well, not flaking. He, he got Flake. a job. <laughs> Call him out. Call him out. It's no, documented. No, he's still my best friend. No. Um, he got a job, so he couldn't come. And he didn't tell me. Um, I think a, a week ahead of time, he told me. So that whole time, I was like, okay, I'm not going to go. I'm not going to go. And then my mom kind of talked me into going by myself. She talked you into it. Yeah, because uh, okay. her, her best friend lives there. Okay. So And when her best friend was my age, she came to the States, and that's how they met. She started traveling and came to the States. So she's like, she's Did, always been a okay. traveler. Yeah. My mom doesn't travel so much, but she's always, even my grandpa's a travel agent and just things like that. They always kind of, I had a big influence on travel when, since I was younger. Um, so yeah, I pretty much decided the day before I, was, I guess I was started packing my stuff like, okay, I guess I'm actually going to go and do it. Mm -hmm. And I traveled and I went to like five different countries within that month. And I was just going by myself and I met so many people and I really enjoyed it and it was different to me because I know not a lot of I don't usually meet a lot of Americans that do actually travel mm -hmm. barely like they travel here and there. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it was crazy to me. And I really wanted to teach people that there's other things out in the world other than just America. Yeah. And so that was like one of the biggest things I started um, watching YouTube a lot and I would watch um different like sam colder and just a bunch of people that have like travel films mm -hmm. and i was like always kind of thought like oh i kind of want to do that but i didn't know how to do it so i used my iphone and like a little stabilizer and, and that's yeah, unreal exactly so, you just made it work yeah um but at the time um i want to say before so all of 2017 or all of 2016 i had an apartment i had a dog i had a car like i had everything that i was this like, was in la or vegas in vegas, in vegas. Yeah, so I was actually living by myself. Like, I had everything, like, that normal people have, I guess. Mm -hmm. And after that trip in November, I decided, like, it didn't make me happy. Like, I had a house full of stuff, and I wasn't happy with it. I wasn't How long happy. were you on that trip, by the way? Was it, like, a month? A you month, said, yeah. It was a month straight. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I just really was not happy, and I was feeling really depressed once I got back home. Like, I loved being around my family, but it just didn't feel right. Like, mm -hmm. I knew I wanted to be doing something else. And I always kind of wanted to start a blog and, like, things like that. So I kind of, like, dabbled with it and started, like, making my um, website and things like that. And then I finally saved enough money that in February I decided to leave and, like, go travel. And I remember my brother... Left everything. Yeah. Like, your house, your yeah. car, you just so, got rid of yeah. it? Or I actually... Um, like, my apartment, my lease was up in January. My birthday was January. And my lease was up at that month. At that month, so February sixteenth is the first day that I actually left. Mm -hmm. But like my puppy, I gave her to a family friend, so okay. she's like still she's around. She's still safe. Yeah, you she's know where she's here. at. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and my car actually like. I think in December I just stopped paying payments on it, and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was I'm like, good. yeah, I was like, okay, you guys can just come. I gave them my mom's address. I'm like, you guys can pick it up. <laughs> I was done. Like I'm I, good. Yeah. And my brother, he was like in the, um, where were we? I think we were in my mom's house in the kitchen. And I had told my mom like my idea, I'm going to go travel. I'll be gone for a couple months. And they're just looking at me like, yeah, okay, whatever. Sounds good, you know? And my brother is like, how long are you going to be gone? I'm like, oh, six months to a year. And he was like, what do you mean? And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to leave. And my mom's like, you'll be back in a month. She always does that to me. She's always like, she, you'll be back. I mean, that's what parents want to do. They just want to like, like okay, downplay it yeah. because they don't want you to like exactly. go away for that long. Yeah. So she's like, you'll be back in a month. And I ended up being gone for 10 months. 10 so, months. Yeah. 
mm-hmm. 10 months oh my god i don't yeah. even know where to start with that <laughs> so you did you buy a one-way flight i did where was that to london london yeah I, every time i leave i always go back to london that's like that's yeah. like the it's like, my like the home, home base yeah. of like outside exactly. the country yeah you get to london and i think the beautiful thing about europe which i've never even been is that i know you can get around europe yeah easily yeah and which, cheap cheap yeah so you get to london and then what do you do um i think it was in london a week and then i just i i don't know i have like a app that i use it's called Skyscanner. if you go on my blog i have like a whole thing of how i find cheap um flights and things like that um, I think that I just found a random place that I wanted to go to. I think it was Germany. Okay. I think I was going to Berlin. Okay. Um, yeah, I just booked a flight and I was just like, okay, I'm just going to go. It was like $15. $15 I yeah. for a flight. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. And then you got to Germany and you just kept and you just kept moving. Um, well, the thing was I had an Instagram already at that time and I like was kind of meeting people on Instagram a little bit like here and there. So I met this guy on Instagram and like I saw that he was in Berlin and I was like, oh, like I, I think I might want to go out there. I might be traveling there. And he was like, oh, yeah, I'll show you around, blah, blah, blah. So I'm like, cool. So once I got there, I was staying in a hostel and then he was like showing me around and things like that. And then I ended up staying just with him because he just he was going out of town. Mm -hmm. So he let me have his place while he was gone. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. (laughs) Free. Yeah. I'll take it all day. I stayed there for two weeks and then I left somewhere else. I went to Amsterdam after that. Wow. And is it easy for you? Like take so you had the you had the experience obviously working in stores to just communicate with like random strangers. Yeah. Was it easy for you to just throw yourself into these completely different countries and um, like, le- was there a language barrier yeah. difference? No, it was really hard. Like I know my first place I ever went after my first trip, like in November, I went to Barcelona after mm-hmm. London and that was the first place. Like, um, I didn't really speak Spanish. Like my family is, um, part Mexican, okay. but they never taught me any Spanish or anything. I kind of learned a little bit on my own. So I knew some words like here and there, but I didn't know a lot. And I didn't know, like I had on a dress and like a little bit of my thigh showing that it was cold outside. I had on a dress and like boots. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know that out there, if you have like this much of your thigh showing as like a black woman, that they will think that you are a prostitute. So <laughs> I got there like the middle of the night. I think it was maybe like eight o'clock. It was already pretty dark outside. And I took the train to my, I was trying to find my hostel. Okay. And I was just noticing all these guys like kept trying to talk to me or saying things to me in Spanish. And I'm like uncomfortable a little bit. Yeah. My backpack's really heavy. I think I had like a luggage or something. It was just really heavy. So I was asking people for directions. I obviously look like a tourist because I have a map on my phone. Like I'm <laughs> trying to figure it's out so where obvious. I'm going. Yeah. So this guy, he was like, oh, I'll take you to your hostel. Like he, he was going to walk me because it wasn't that far. Mm-hmm. And he's like, you know, you have to be safe. These people out here are like kind of sketchy sometimes. Um, he was like, because I had on, he told me about what I had on was kind of inappropriate and things like that. And I was like, okay, cool. And he was telling me I had like a daughter who was eight years old. So we get to the hostel and he starts talking to them in Spanish. And I didn't know that he was telling the people that he was with me. He was staying with me. So they gave him the room number and everything. So he's like walking me to my room and I'm like, no, it's cool. Like I'll walk myself. And he's like, no. So he starts trying to like grab me and like do I'm like, okay, no. Like, wow. Yeah. So it was crazy. And so it didn't get very far. He I I pretty much pushed him and I was like, get the hell off me. Yeah. Yeah. So he ended up leaving. But I didn't realize because it was so cold outside. Once we got inside, I could smell him and he smelled like alcohol. So I'm like, wow. okay. like obviously he's junk. I know how to pick friends, Mm -hmm. you know, whatever. Um, so it was fine. So I stayed in a hostel and that whole night I was pretty much crying because I, I didn't. Probably scared. Like, what, yeah, where, like, where I am I doing? Yeah, like, I was just like, what, why am I even traveling? Like, this is so weird. Why am I out here by myself? I don't know anyone. It's not safe. Like, I just thought, I didn't know anything about Barcelona. I just booked a random ticket. Yeah. So I was like, this is just really horrible. Like, I shouldn't even be out here right now. And then, um, I ended up meeting someone. He was 40, I want to say. Mm-hmm. Um, he was staying in the hostel hostel also, and he was about to go to a yoga retreat and work there. And he started telling me about like work away and things like that, just how he works and travels full time. So he was pretty much like homeless and he was just like traveling and like making money here and there and doing just finding a way yeah, to, to like, pay the bills. Yeah. Doing like little odd jobs, I guess. And that's kind of, he was like, you will really love Spain. You just have to give it a chance. Like tomorrow, don't wear makeup. Don't wear hair. Like don't do anything. Just go normal and you will love it. And I'm like, 
okay, like, fine, I'll give it one day. And then after this, I'm going to London because I just couldn't do it. You didn't want to be there. Yeah, exactly. So the next morning, I ended up waking up and the guy on my top bunk, this was also my first hostel. So it was also just like That's got to be an experience in in itself because there's like a couple people per room or something. So it's horrible. So the next day, I wake up and there's a guy um, on my top bunk and he was like moving around. So I woke up and I'm like, Good morning and he's like morning so he starts talking to me and he was like um he was telling me like he was out there to visit his boyfriend or whatever if i wanted to come to breakfast so i was like sure so we ended up hanging out and he showed me like a lot of barcelona before he got on his flight and then the rest of the day i did by myself mm-hmm. but it turns out he's from london so like every time i go to london we're always like he's like one of my really really good friends wow. and i met him and like, you met him at a hostel yeah, and oh my like my God. first actual day traveling so wow. it was cool how long did the the money that you had saved up last you and then when did you like have to figure out a way to start making money because yeah. obviously i would love to go do this yeah. but there has to, <laughs> the big question always is yeah. how do you make money yeah. doing it okay so um previous to leaving i knew that at some point the money was gonna run out so i had to have like so many backup plans so i looked on youtube for like hours um how to make money while traveling like Just things like that. Even the advice the guy gave me in Barcelona, I was like using Workaway and just things like that where you can pretty much stay at somebody's, um, say if they live on a farm or if they are, have like a house, but they have their own business or something, they will allow you to work at their business for free and in order for free accommodation and free food. Wow. That's a pretty good deal. You just have to do the work, whatever they want. And it's usually not much or sometimes it's even like teaching their kid how to speak English or just something like that. So again, it's another situation where you don't know what you're getting into. It's Mm -hmm. kind of something that's uncomfortable, but you have to do it. You need to find a way to make money, right? (laughs) So I ran out of money, I want to say maybe in April um it's pretty good yeah two, two months living on <laughs> yeah. the road like that is pretty yeah. good but um i ran out of money in april i was in amsterdam and i actually met somebody who was my age i think he was my age his name is jj um he was traveling with his brother and they were staying in my hostel mm-hmm. and for some reason i was about to go to rome and i was gonna work and i was going to um work in one of the hostels that i knew of and i knew people there and he was like, I asked him, like, oh, do you want to go on a little road trip with me? I think I'm going to go to um, Spain or something, and then I'm going to go to Rome after. And he's like, yeah. So, But his brother was like, no. And they were leaving the next day. So they already had tickets to go home. This guy literally didn't even go home. And he just stayed with me. <laughs> So he stayed with me and he was like, the next morning, he's like, hey, like, let's go. I'm good. I'm staying. Yeah. And he was, his, he freaked his brother out because his brother is like, I have no, like, what are you doing? Like, you need to go back home. You need to go to work. He's like, nope, this is like once in a lifetime opportunity. I'm going to do it. So it was really crazy because I feel like when you are a traveler, you don't expect people to um, help you out. Mm-hmm. But I think travelers do really help each You're other out. You're all on out. the same like journey. Yeah, you guys don't have any yeah, like agenda. You're exactly. just having a good time, enjoying your yeah. life. So I actually ran out of money and I was told him like, I'm going to go back to Rome. And he was like, no, like I really want to travel with you. Like he really wanted to see things. And I guess I was teaching him a lot of things and he was teaching me a lot of things too. So we ended up going to, I think, Paris and Rome and or Paris and Barcelona and France and things like that <laughs> until he had to go home. So it was crazy. Um, so yeah, wow. that was kind of a thing. And then once I got to France, um, he had to go back home okay. and that night I was in the hostel and I was kind of thinking like, what do I do? I was a little scared. I'm not going to lie, but I would do yeah. like, I need money. I need money. <laughs> I had $60 to my name at that time. So I was like, I didn't really know what I was going to do, but I knew I had to do something. Mm-hmm. So again, I was like, I'll just go to Rome. Cause that was the plan. Um, this girl walked into the hostel and she was talking to, well, this guy was talking to me and JJ and he introduced us to this girl and she started talking to me and like, she wanted to know my story and I was telling her it and she's like, um, well, what are you going to do? I'm like, well, I have $60. I'm not sure. I'm just going to go and go to Rome. It's not a big deal for me. Mm -hmm. And then she was like, why don't you just come stay with me? I'm like, what do you mean? She's like, well, I live in France. It was the South of France. So it was, um, we were in Nice. Mm Mm-hmm. And she's like, yeah, just come stay with me. <laughs> oh I'm God. like, what do you mean? So I actually lived with her for like a month and I was like applying at all these jobs and I like was trying to work in hostels and just any way like possible to try to get Still off this $60. Yeah. 
So oh it was crazy. But a lot of the time she was actually like helping me buy food and things like that. So this is what I mean. Like so many travelers will help you because they've already been in your position. So yeah. even for me, like if I know somebody is struggling, I will help, always help them because I've had people really, really help me. Mm-hmm. So it's just kind of like a thing. Damn. Yeah. So we just kind of help each other out. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Thank and you. And it's been, it was 18 countries. Mm-hmm. Uh, Indonesia, Iceland, Thailand, London, France, Italy, more. If you could replay one moment, mm-hmm. what would it be? Mm. I want to say this recent trip I took with like one of my really good friends. We actually just met and she's a blogger also. Awesome. I brought her along with me to come travel around Asia and at, we were waking up at like five in the morning to go look at waterfalls and things like that in Indonesia. And although it was like really annoying to wake up and like have to be awake, do your makeup, <laughs> do everything and like do photo shoots and stuff, we were doing it. And I think it, I really, really miss it there. Yeah. I think that's one of the times I like really, really miss is being in Bali and like. Uh, seeing some of your pictures, yeah, it doesn't even look real. You. It doesn't even look real. <laughs> like that place looks. Yeah. Amazing. I really, really miss it. I think just waking up and just exploring, yeah. even though it might be like inconvenient because you're tired, it's just exploring and getting out and doing those things were like really amazing for me. Yeah. yeah. Do you think you'll be able to, if you're not already, yeah. like utilize your Instagram to make money fully that would pay for all your travels? Um. Yeah. So right now I just got to 20,000 followers about, Woo-hoo! thank Woo-hoo! you. <laughs> I just got to 20,000 followers a few days ago, mm-hmm. Um. but I'm already having companies message me and like tell me that they want me to put whatever on my Instagram. Just of course, make, any yeah, ad. Any, exactly. Yeah. Cause it's just te- cheap advertisement for them. Um, but I don't do it like a lot of the times because there's people that have like coffee scrub for your face or something I, that has nothing to do with my followers. And I'm smart. Yeah, Stay on brand. exactly. And I don't want to have like bad companies on my Instagram. Yeah. Check out this. Yeah, yeah. You don't want to yeah. try to sell something that actually yeah. doesn't make sense. Um, but I've had companies like ask me to put something that has to do with travel and they'll give me like a hundred or 150 or something for a one blog post or one Instagram post. I've also had people try to take advantage of me, like um, companies I've reached out to. So a lot of the times I do get free accommodations when I'm traveling now. Okay. Um, now that I have a blog post and, or now that I have a blog and my Instagram and I'm doing videos, it's a lot of things that I'm doing for them. So a lot of different ways that I can. So you'll say like, them. if you let me stay here, I'll share yeah, my exactly. story staying here. Yeah. So I will say like, I'll put you on my Instagram and I'll put you on my blog. A lot of them, I had a company, they were a great company, and mind you, the room was like um, almost $1,000 a night for that villa that I was staying in, but they wanted me to put six Instagram posts and like two, um, what was it, six Instagram posts and I think two blog posts, which is a lot of work. It's a lot. It's really intense, and I didn't understand that at the time, so at the time, I'm like, yeah, sounds great, like, cool, I get cool, free accommodations, spa, whatever, and now I look back on it like, what was I actually thinking? Because it's just so much work. Yeah. And they knew what they were doing when they asked me to do it. And I'm like, like, it wasn't yeah. work. Like, it wasn't like they were getting more out of you than they yeah, should have, essentially. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, because it does take a lot of effort to go in there. And well, pretty much you get usually two to three days. Well, personally, I get two or three days free accommodation. Mm-hmm. Um, usually it's mostly two. So the first day you just get there, you just checked in, you're not dressed or anything you're kind of tired it's middle of the afternoon whatever Mm -hmm. um the next day is the one day you kind of have free and then the day after that you check out so that one day that you have free for you're supposed they you have to like get for that company you're taking pictures i got you you're like getting dressed taking pictures like trying to explore take video things like that you don't really have time to relax and do anything so it might look cool like oh she's always like doing all that no it's like a lot of work you know so I think that's just the thing is I've I've realized now that I'm home is kind of like you need to not stretch yourself so thin and mm-hmm. start um, getting. You have paid all these people funneling in, so figure out like yeah. who, who am I gonna allow my attention yeah. to? Yeah. And that's the beauty of having the leverage now of having the following. Yeah. How have you built that following? Um, I started really. I have a friend that does social media marketing mm-hmm. out in LA. Um, his name is Mark. He taught me literally everything I know about social media and how to like beat the algorithms and things like that um sorry hold on. no go go <laughs> go please 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 that's what we have the water here for okay um so yeah he taught me everything i know about social media and 
pretty much a lot of it has to do with like having content that people actually want to see. So I put a lot of effort into my Instagram, also like putting effort into making captions and things like that, because all of that really matters. I notice when I'm posting like a lyric to some song as a caption rather than when I post something that actually means something to my followers or that they can benefit from. Yeah they really respond to it well. The lyric more than the... No, no, no. The, the genuine the post. Genuine the genuine post, post. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So um, I think that's like one of the big biggest things. Also, just putting... um Hashtagging, tagging brands and companies in like the pictures is huge. There's so many different things. It actually takes me like 45 minutes to just post. Just to post one picture. Yeah, I believe exactly. It. Yeah, so, there's a lot that goes into it. It is, yeah. But obviously it pays off with, yeah. as time as you're starting to grow your own following. Exactly. That's cool. Um. What is the number one lesson you've learned from traveling? Uh, uh, I'm sure there's a lot. Yeah, there there's is a, a ton. Lot. But what's <laughs> like what's the one that jumps to your head when I say that? Like what? Let's see. Hmm. I think to believe in yourself a lot. I think is one of the things. Mm -hmm. I know that people when I was first starting out, a lot of people didn't think that I was going to be able to do what I've done. And there's so much more to come, you know, um, but like you have to really believe in yourself and every you you can't focus on the people that don't believe in you. I don't even think that my family was even like 100 percent on board with everything. So just having myself as like my own support system has been like the biggest lesson I've had huge. to learn. Yeah, that's huge. Yeah. And of course, like your family wants to believe in you, but they also yeah. don't because they don't yeah. want you to be like. <laughs> Oh, gone for that like exactly. long of a period of a time. Well, even I just got um, home like a few days ago. My mom's like, so you need to be applying at jobs. I'm like, mom, like I'm not going to work. What are you talking no. about? No. This I'm is just a quick not. like stop yeah, back home and keep it moving. Yeah, just here until February and I'm leaving. Like, <laughs> no. She just it's wants crazy. you to stay home. Yeah. She wants you to stay home. It makes it uh, it makes sense. What do you think has changed the most about you since, since leaving? Um, Ten months is a long time yeah. to be traveling around. I definitely think I've matured like a lot and I hate saying that because I don't like acting like, oh, I'm so mature. I definitely have so much to learn still in my yeah. life, but I, I think that I've matured a lot in different ways. Like, um, being in LA a lot, I, I used to live in Vegas, but I would come to LA once a week just to do hair and like hang out with my friends and family. I think it's very more materialistic than the rest of the world. I want to say, I mean, there's Rolls Royces, <laughs> BMWs, Bentleys yeah, driving yeah, down yeah. it. It's it blows crazy. my mind yeah. the amount of like you have to people feel they have to exactly. have that to feel good about themselves. Exactly. And I don't ever think that I I didn't think when I was younger that I was actually I want to say like I didn't think I was actually pretty in a way. I, I knew I was OK, but you know, but I didn't think <laughs> I was like actually pretty or like. So I always felt the need when I was in at home like in vegas or la i always had to do a full face of makeup like thick makeup i have to have hair extensions i have to have like the best clothes like i have to have some like everything i had to do was really big and nice mm -hmm. and i think that that's one of the biggest things that for me when i actually left in february it's kind of changed now but when i left in february i didn't even i think i didn't wear hair extensions i didn't wear makeup because out there it's not like People more care about you as a person rather than what you have and the things that, and I, I've learned that along the way. Yeah. And so I think that the biggest thing has been definitely like, draw, like learning myself and learning more about myself and what's important about myself and things that I can change and fix in my life rather than doing my makeup differently and yeah. doing things like that has yeah. been like huge. It's confidence. Yeah. You can walk into a room and feel exactly. completely confident. I, I see people that, like flex things on their Instagram and yeah. it, there's nothing wrong with showing, I don't want to say showing off, but there's nothing wrong with working your ass off and getting that car you've always yeah. wanted, the house and showing the world like this is what I've worked my ass off for. But it's another thing to to think you are so much better than somebody exactly. because you have a watch and yeah. you, have, you fly on a private jet. I yeah. think there's a balance to it. But exactly. at the end of the day, if you can have that confidence in yourself yeah. and I can only imagine that traveling – abroad like that I, I hope to one day like get this opportunity but i can only imagine that that just opens your mind because america is america but when you step outside of it and you it's see crazy. these other places in the world and how people operate and what they appreciate in their yeah. life and they don't care about things yeah it, 
I can only imagine it opens your yeah. it opens your eyes. I just came from Asia and Asia is like a, a great example of where they don't have anything. Like these people live in huts that they make themselves. Yeah. Out of like ten huts, they will literally make the house themselves. Yeah. And so it's crazy. And especially like Bangkok, I think is not not the worst, but it, it's pretty much the place where i see this the most you will see like the huge skyscrapers everywhere and if you look outside of your big skyscraper like your big nice hotel you look outside there's huts right huts next to everywhere it. right it's crazy so i'm just like i i learned to appreciate it a lot more i did go through a little phase where i was making a little money like doing videography and i was like cool i'm gonna buy a bag yeah, and, blah, yeah. blah, blah, and like <laughs> just buying the nah. things that i didn't have you know I, I still have them now, but actually I just sold one of my purses so that I can go back and travel in February. Smart. So I'm going to just sell everything because at this point I don't need it. It doesn't, mm -hmm. I don't post it on Instagram. Sometimes, like I don't usually make it a habit to post everything on Instagram. Yeah. And yeah, I, I made money like doing videography, but I don't want to make that something that I have to, I feel like I need to share like having a bag. I really rather sell a Gucci bag or Louis Vuitton bag for a trip to go Absolutely. somewhere for a few months. And if you're going to buy anything, let it be equipment or things that are exactly, going to help you like yeah. invest into exactly. building your brand or to yeah. building like what you're trying so, to do. Yeah. Even I make mistakes and like buy dumb stuff. Yeah, we all do. But yeah, we all definitely do that. If somebody that's listening and they're wanting to travel on a budget, yeah. what's maybe the first thing that they can do, or maybe they even want to start their own blog, regardless yeah. if they're trying to, to go to Europe or something, what, what's the first step they should take? Um, I think saving money is huge. It's not that big, but it's pretty good. Um, also researching for me, researching was the biggest thing. Cause I wouldn't have known to how to, I guess, make my money stretch for a long period of time. People could, I had somebody the other day tell me that they spent $4,000 on one month of travel. I would never That's do that. so aggressive. Unless I'm spending money on You're staying on at my, the Ritz or exactly, something. They're doing every something single wrong. single night, like, no. Um, so I think just researching is huge, and I need to be better on my part as far as being a blogger. I'm really trying to teach people how to do these things. I know I get messages, like, all the time. How do you start traveling? They don't know where to start. They, they want to be a blogger. They don't know where to begin. I really want my website to be somewhere where people can do a lot of research on things that i've already done because i've learned so much and yeah. i already have the knowledge because i went out and did the research did it. yeah so yeah Damn. i think just researching is like the number one thing is there an app that you use for like booking flights and all that or do you yeah, just kind of so, do it? yeah i use skyscanner that skyscanner is like the biggest the thing one. that i do you have to use it on a private browser um, but yeah, I have a whole blog post on my blog telling you how to book cheap flights and giving you different tips, but definitely Skyscanner is like Sky the number Scanner one. Skyscanner is like, the one. Yeah. Are they paying you to say this? No. <laughs> you got to hit wish, them up and I get wish. them to like pay you. Like maybe yeah. they'll like start po like paying you to post or something I know. or just pay, give you free flights. Exactly. That'd be, that'd that'd be kind of cool. Good. Um, one of your IG captions said positive mind, positive vibes, positive life. Mm -hmm. Why is it important to be optimistic? Um, I think you have to be positive. There's There will be times where you, as a person, everybody will be going through something and you have to kind of keep your mind like away from negative things or those things will really just swallow, swallow you up as a person. Even for me, like um, running out of money was huge. But during that time, I remember my mom called me and she's like, how are you not crying? Like, you can't get home. She couldn't afford for me to to fly me home either she's like you have to wait until june like i really just do not have it so that was crazy and i was really happy like i felt really happy on the inside and it was a point where i really didn't have anything at all but you, i was you couldn't like even go home yeah. to wait where everything <laughs> yeah, was exactly i didn't have anything but i was in such a beautiful place and i was thinking to myself like mostly people no, no one that i know has ever been here and a lot of them will never come here and to be standing here in france and like dealing with all this stuff is crazy yeah. um and there's people that are doing worse than you like that 60 dollars can get you a couple groceries yeah. like you need to stop being so i think that was Bougie. kind of a, don't, yeah, you don't need, yeah, exactly. you don't need to go sit down and have a restaurant <laughs> exactly. meal like eat noodles yeah, or something i think that was the thing that was the point for me where i kind of started thinking differently than mm -hmm. materialistic things so yeah yeah i mean that's it's i guess it really comes down to how you look at how you look at things right even yeah. the optimism like you can either look at the situation as being i only have 60 dollars and i'm screwed i can't get home and i don't know how i'm gonna be able to afford 
the next week or it's exactly. like i have money to buy me food for the next couple of days and then let's figure yeah. out how i'm gonna yeah. like make that actually happen i definitely think if i wasn't being positive i wouldn't have met that girl i wouldn't have had a place to stay i would have been upstairs crying yeah. and like not knowing what to do i was gonna say even even yesterday when you got into the uber you yeah. were very like upbeat and yeah. energetic and i was like all right there's something about this girl she's Thank very you. like you're with it like yeah you can i think that's so important is that you don't know how an interaction could change you like yeah this not may not have ever happened if it was a typical pool ride when exactly. people get in my uber and they just put on their headphones and they and they stay quiet yeah like you don't know who you're interacting with yeah. you don't know the conversations you could have or exactly who's around you yeah i think i just got kind of got like this where i'm kind of trying this whole positive thing it's working out i but love it yeah, yeah it definitely has to work <laughs> yeah, out it can't hurt you out. like yeah. how, how can being positive hurt you yeah like b- being works. like that positive person that walks yeah. in the room and everybody smiles like how can that hurt yeah, you yeah but i know i used to be completely the opposite like be debbie downer like i always had something bad to say i'm always like doing something like it's not worth it. I yeah. feel much more happy how I am now. Yeah. You have a lot of confidence in yourself. How Thank do you, you think how do you think people can build that in themselves if they're not confident? Um for me, it's funny cuz I just started doing this recently. I actually woke up when I got back home to Vegas and I was so miserable because I, I just hate Vegas in general. Like, no offense to anybody who's from there, yeah. but I really don't like it personally. Yeah, and especially after just traveling, you're like, yeah, it, exactly. it feel, I, could, I would imagine yeah. it's like withdrawals. Yeah. It's not that high of like, I'm out in the yeah, middle. Yeah, of- I feel like I'm almost going back to a life that I had like before like now i've kind of created something else for myself now Mm -hmm. something better and i'm kind of going back to all of the negative things that are back in vegas and i i hate it um so i kind of woke up feeling really sad and one of the things that i did i've never done this before i had like my mind was kind of like racing there was a bunch of stuff going on i went on my computer and i just started typing everything that i was feeling at the time and one of the things that I really did was not to blame other people for how I was feeling. So I cannot blame anybody else but myself. myself yeah, because yeah, I'm the one at the end of the day. I didn't have to come home, but I chose to because I wanted to grow and do different things. And that's why it was my choice to come home. So I think really writing out and trying to understand what is wrong with you, what you even if you can't do it at that point, write out everything. Like I'm mad at this and I'm pissed off with this and like whatever, however you're feeling, go back to it later and like try to understand why was I actually feeling yeah. this way? Yeah. Like I think for women, especially it's so hard for us to like channel our emotions. I used to go crazy and like <laughs> be that crazy girlfriend that's always like doing stuff. And I'm not like that anymore. I've learned so much and I think that it's really important to have like, be happy within and like really understand who you are as a person it's really hard and it's gonna take a long time takes a long time yeah i've just been through so much stuff i i can do it now at 20 Mm -hmm. i am i'm able to understand things at 20 that people at 35 are still kind of getting their head around and i think that's why i'm really blessed for that but Mm -hmm. helping other people is really important to me to get them to that level too even though they won't listen all the time they don't always listen yeah but you could be the role model that that actually does it and uh you have to almost, I've said it before, but like you literally have to almost fall in love with yourself before you can expect other people to love you. Yeah, Like, exactly. you know, yeah. like you have to be fully confident in yourself. You have to, because the way I look at it is like people can, of relationship, right? Yeah. People can stop having feelings at any moment in time. And if you're not truly confident and happy with who you are yeah. and they leave, you're, you know, it's like it, the rug gets pulled out underneath yeah. you. So it's like. Spend the time, although it's not easy. No, and I guess nobody really wants to do it. Like find who you are. And yeah. Like, what like yeah. what makes you tick? I think that was the biggest thing for me too. I was in a relationship that I was like so in love with this person, like probably more than I've ever been in my How life. How long were you guys in a relationship for? Not very long, actually. It was only like six months. It's it that, was very hey, short. Yeah. Love can be three <laughs> months, six months. It doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah, and but we were like so in love with each other, and then literally just my mistakes i didn't cheat or anything but it was just th- certain things i was doing i shouldn't have been doing and it led that person to not trust me anymore mm-hmm. and it just went downhill from there um that was before i started traveling so like while i was traveling at the beginning i was still dealing with all of that and like feeling really sad a lot of the times and i i had to understand the whole situation like timing was horrible for yeah. that relationship if i would have met this this person now it would been great yeah but i met this person at a bad time in my life to where i wasn't control of myself or my emotions and so building myself up now to um really understanding everything about myself is like huge yeah so yeah 
That's good. That I mean, you have to good. you have to go through those tough yeah. times to to learn something. Um, if you had to wake up every morning and read a quote out loud before you started your day, what would it be? I'm not good at quotes. I don't even read quotes. It doesn't even have to be. You don't have to like credit somebody. It could yeah. be just like a saying that you would want to say to yourself um, out loud. I think like you can do it and just work really hard. Like nothing comes overnight. You have like everything has progress. So just work as hard as you can to get where you need to be. Even if that means you have to sacrifice certain things. Yeah. yeah. I mean, sacrifices is that Huge. is yeah. you yeah. buying a flight and just saying, <laughs> screw it, leaving everything behind. Like that's yeah. a sacrifice in itself. But yeah. you wouldn't be who you are, I'm guessing right now, or you wouldn't have had all these experiences and at all. If you yeah. didn't take that leap and, and say, I'm just going to do it and see where exactly. it takes me. Yeah. Um, Sometimes people let fear hold them back from chasing their dreams. How do you think people can overcome that fear and actually do what they love? Whether um, it's like you, like you had everything, mm-hmm. you didn't want to quit. You, you, you could have just wrote it off and said, I'm staying like this for the rest of my life. But you literally said, screw it, dumped your car, your yeah. house and everything. How can people get over that fear? Uh, for me, it was just seeing other people do what I wanted to do and figure out where they came from their story and how they got to where they are. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of the times people will look at, say you will look at a celebrity or something and be like, great, their life is amazing. And but you don't see all the troubles that they go through Mm -hmm. and you just look at them and you're like, wow, like I will never be like them. I will never be there. But it's really, really important, especially like um, for me, like different people I really look up to like videographers and bloggers and things like that you have to know that they started from somewhere and at zero yeah and like just looking at their story that's why it's so important for like influencers to like do this kind of thing where they're talking about like everything that kind of went on in their life to how they got there it's really important to see other people doing something even if it wasn't great even if they're not where they need to be now people tell me like congratulations you're doing amazing like whatever i'm like i'm literally just a normal person <laughs> yeah. like i have twenty thousand followers on instagram that's great but i love people that have like a million followers yeah. on instagram i'm like i want to be but there that's the only way you're ever gonna exactly. get there i try to remind myself that with everything that i yeah. do you have to yeah. you start at zero yeah and it's steps yeah you don't grow overnight it's not like a huge thing to get all these followers or something overnight or to be where you want to be overnight that's not gonna happen like yeah. it's happened for me a little fast but that doesn't normally happen it's not gonna happen for everyone but if you work really hard then like you'll get there but i think definitely like if you are being scared of something if you're scared of something right now youtube is huge because people huge. yeah people will just tell you like pour their heart hearts out to you on in, on youtube and just tell you like everything that they have went through and how they have overcame and got to where they are and that kind of makes you not so scared anymore knowing somebody else is going through it yeah. with you as well they see th- that's the thing is you see like an Instagram picture and it's a split second of a moment of them smiling and you think this person is great. You know what I mean? (laughs) Yeah. And it does show off like where this person is and what they're doing. But when you break it down, they are literally human beings. Like they had to go through some type of process to get there. Everybody sees the end result, but nobody sees like that struggle or that journey of getting to that like end destination. Yeah. Everybody just wants to instantly, I want to be the top podcast. I want to be the top YouTuber. I want to be the top at everything. But I just have to keep putting out videos and, and podcasts and not, I don't even try to look at the numbers anymore. Like yeah. I see it and I'm cool, but if it's a hundred, if it's 10,000, I'm still going to keep going. So yeah. why am I going to get caught up and allow it? that to, to hold me back or, you know, make me feel like I'm not doing the right exactly. thing. Exactly. I don't even look at my blog traffic. I have no, I have no clue how many people actually read my blog. Smart. I don't even think it's anyone, to be honest. Like, <laughs> yeah, opinion, I read it today, so yeah. there's, there's one person. You got in one click. In my opinion, like, literally no one reads my blog. I just post the blog. Just if, if the information's there, if people want to use it. Yeah. You know, most people won't, but it's it's there, you know? <laughs> it was so funny because today, actually, someone um, emailed, or they put a comment on my blog, like, oh, this information really, really helped me. I'm planning to go here in 2018. Like, they wanted to know more information. I'm like, Damn. someone actually read my <laughs> blog read like it. i'm shocked like you know i'll write, I'll write back in <laughs> whatever you want to know i got yeah, you so it's so funny like i don't know you never one big takeaway I've, I've taken from this project is you never know who's watching you yeah the, the people could either be ghost following you or they're reading the blogs and you're not checking the analytics yeah your content and the way you display yourself and put yourself to the world is actually impacting somebody yeah. like you could be your content could be 
the way somebody lives travel. Like they can't afford it or they don't have necessarily the confidence to take that leap yet, but they're seeing Daya do it and they're like, damn, she's doing yeah. it. Like I love these pictures. Maybe I should just do it. Yeah. I think that's what videography for me was so important to do. I want people to be able to like almost be able to like smell and like see what it's like yeah. to be there. Just like experience Through it you. completely. Yeah. And that's why it's huge for me. I haven't been doing many videos. I have a lot of videos that I've actually done. I just haven't edited them and got them together, which is why I'm home now. Mm. So I can get a bunch of work just done. Sit down and just exactly. Get it done. Like get it everything done. It's really important for me though to show people like I wanna start soon doing vlogs as well. Mm. Um, just because I wanna show people that my life is not perfect. I'm not like doing all I'm not paying a bunch of money to go travel and like Everything that I, I've spent is barely anything. Like, I don't pay a lot of money to do this kind of thing that I do. And it's really possible for anybody to do it. And I just want them to see, like, the struggles I actually go through yeah. on a daily basis. It's not easy. Yeah. And I don't wake up, like, <laughs> perfect. perfect yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I think it works two ways. It helps people see what you're doing. But then it's also documenting your journey. Yeah. So you're able to go back in six months. I can go back in some vlogs that I did five months ago. Yeah. I'm like, holy crap. Yeah. Like, there's there's something different about me or I can think about what I was I can kind of flash back and and think like I was not believing myself in this moment and things panned out yeah so it, it works both ways yeah. like you can put it out there and whether people see it or not yeah I definitely see that even in my first I only have two videos posted right now I'll have another one um in within the next two weeks I saw the Hawaii one that's cool thank you that's cool but it's so funny like I'm looking at my first video I ever did my like I think I started filming the first one. It's called This is London. Mm -hmm. I filmed that in February mm -hmm. with an iPhone 7 and like a stabilizer that I had just bought mm -hmm. just for the chip. And it's crazy to watch like the difference in like now having a drone and having like this great oh, camera. You're the, oh, you're the OG. I was wondering. <laughs> I saw the Hawaii one. I was like, she got a drone yeah, or something? Yeah. <laughs> Damn, that's cool. So it's crazy to me to see like just the differences of like what i've actually came through it makes me want to cry sometimes but it also makes me laugh because i'm just like wow like look at how bad this is and like i'm tempted to like delete the don't, stuff sometimes but i it. never do because don't. it's just like so important for people to see like the, the progress yeah like what you've done like in just this short period of time even if it takes you two years to like see a difference it's, it's crazy gonna happen. yeah the, i read something today it's like the future is always gonna come yeah like you're, it's inevitable and we always are obviously like it's important to be present live in the moment right now work like focus on what's ahead of you today but yeah. eventually you're gonna be 22 and then where are where are you gonna be that comes back to like it's on you like you are controlling yeah. where that road takes you and if you if you give up it's literally on you. Like yeah. you can't blame anybody else. Yeah. But if you have all this, all this content and videos and don't delete it, it's going to be cool to look back in a couple of years and publicly be able to like, yeah, I that's that. where I started. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Now I got a crew exactly. traveling with me around the world. Like yeah. hit me, like, look at, yeah. I, I put in the work, you that's know what so I mean? Funny. Yeah. I definitely think that as well. It's going to happen. Definitely it's going to happen. <laughs> what do you think your purpose is? Um, I think my purpose is really to show people what traveling is like not even traveling i think my purpose is really to inspire people to like do things that they actually want to do even if they don't know they want to do it yeah. like i didn't know i wanted to be a blogger or a videographer until last year until last year just right before i started traveling and i i just dropped everything i i had for it and i'm still willing to do that everything i have like clothes bags anything i'm, I'm selling everything so I think my biggest purpose is to really teach people that they can do it as well. I'm not just somebody who's like pretty and just have like things thrown at me because I'm pretty or something like it. It really has nothing to do with it. And I feel like people always think that about me. Like, <laughs> oh, she's pretty. and She has somebody doing this for her. And then yeah. like, no, it's really not like that. And I really love being able to teach people like this is how I saved money. I might be making money now, but it's not it wasn't always like that and like i really had to put in a lot of work and effort and time like get four hours of sleep every single day to like do what i'm doing now and i'm barely at barely where i kind of was wanting to be like next year will be crazy for me because i know how far if i came this far this year like how far will i go next year it's kind of like really teaching people to just do whatever you love doing and just like exploring those options, even if it's like you don't know if you'll be good at doing this, try. Yeah. Because you don't ever know if you'll be good at it, but you need to at least try and say, okay, 
I was horrible at this. I, I sucked at this, yeah. but you know, something uh, something over here will be better for yeah. me. So I think that's really important. It's about to change years. Yeah. Uh, what's like the one goal you have for yourself next year? Um, I really want to be like, I'm already getting like free accommodations, but that is just because me messaging 80 companies and is that how it works you're just, yeah, you're just sending yeah. emails and just hope yeah. somebody responds so i'm resp like i'm messaging i'm saying hey i'm coming out to bali messaging like 80 to 100 hotels wow. getting four responses wow. back yeah so it's a lot and it's a lot of no's and i hate being told no we like everybody else does yeah but it's you have to really put in that work so i'm hoping that next year i get like more sponsorships and it's not about the money for me i really don't care if i'm getting paid a lot of money or not I'm sure I will, but I don't, I don't really, you I don't really care. Yeah. Say, say yeah, it. I will. You well, will. Yeah, I will. <laughs> um, but I think that my biggest goal is to be able to travel completely for free and mm -hmm. just really like not take advantage of that and really still do the things that I set out to do. Like yeah. still really teach people and inspire people and show people what it's like to be where I am and just those kind of things. That's my biggest goal and not to forget about my purpose. Yeah. I think that's and funny. live simply and and yeah. even if everything's coming in like be smart yeah. And, yeah. and try to remember like these moments of exactly when you had I guess nothing yeah well like honestly I before I left like I said I had all those things now I don't even have a I don't have a car I don't have a house like I don't have a part I'm just staying with my mom like in the den I don't even care yeah. yeah it's pretty good though like I I know people just think I have so much stuff and I really don't yeah. and I think that's crazy to me that people think that I'm like I mean that's how people are, people are gonna perceive yeah, it as one thing or another that I want people to know like I really don't have a lot like I really don't but I I take what I have and I really appreciate them and I try to use those things to help me grow yeah in a way the camera yeah. the bag to pack yeah, all your exactly. stuff in like yeah. things that actually have a purpose yeah. and it's not just there to flash and, exactly. and make you look like a baller yeah um even though you might be a baller no <laughs> uh, before I get into closing questions, this is when I reverse the role. Yeah. I allow my guests to ask me any one question. It could be about something we talked about today. Two rules, though. Mm -hmm. Cannot be about the podcast. Okay. And it cannot be a question I already asked you today. Uh, any one question. Bad. Wait. Uh, I had to. You know what? Because people were <laughs> – I was. I didn't use the rules before, and people were always asking, one, about the podcast, yeah. or two, they were just taking a question that I used today and reversing it, which I understand it's an easy out, but yeah. I wanted to – to kind of have to make people think a little bit more on the spot. Okay. Well, I need, I need a second for this. this yeah, take your much. time. I got, I got all the time in the world. No, I can sit here and talk to myself. <laughs> this is all I do. Um, uh, what is one thing that you would try outside of your comfort zone for 2018? What is like the biggest thing that you want to jump out and do? It has nothing and not in a, like, has to have something to do with travel. Yeah. It's, uh, I see, you know, it's funny. I said, I accomplished, uh, I think, most of the goals that I set out for 2017. Oh, my God. I feel Same. like it was That's just yesterday. I, I, ma I made a video <laughs> for it, like, January, the first week of January, and I so much remember it. Uh, but the one goal I didn't cross off, and I hate it, was to make it to Europe. Really? Yeah. It was. I was, like, moved to California, did that. Uh, growth on the podcast. I think I, – I don't think I necessarily nailed it, but I got pretty close. I, I like, made things definitely – the right step in the right direction, but yeah. Europe was and has been on the list. Um, and I never want to say I couldn't, but it just with the move to LA, it just was like, I need to save up, make that move happen, and then see how the cards fall. Yeah. 2018, you heard it here first, folks. Uh, I have to. Like, I yeah. need to, I need to do it. You can uh, come with me. I'm leaving February. <laughs> so. I got two. Yeah, I got. What's that? It's uh, mid January, so that gives me like eight weeks. Yeah, I might have little, to. Have I'll see time. how things play out because I've been. <laughs> I've been dying. I've only yeah. been to. Uh, and I, I don't want to say only because I. I know some people can't even see this. I've been to, the Bahamas. That's nice. Outside. I haven't been there. So okay, I beat you, you there. Beat have you been to Cancun? I have. Yeah, okay. twice. Damn. All yeah. right. Sorry. Well, I've been to Cancun. <laughs> I've been to Cancun, the Bahamas. It's the only nice. times I've been outside the country. Yeah. But um, I don't know. I want to. Uh, I would love to get to this to a, a point where I'm traveling and I'm documenting like yeah. passionate people. And, yeah. Um, but 2018, I have to make it to Europe. I don't mm -hmm. know how I'm going to do it, but I'm going to make it happen. I tell people you only need like 1,000. What Are you comfortable staying in hostels? Like, would I'll you stay sleep with on other the people? ground okay, if cool. I have to. Like, I don't <laughs> care, okay? You can Put even... me in a bedrock. <laughs> like, I don't care. They even have things called couch surfing where you can pretty much stay somewhere for free okay. um, for nothing just to meet a new friend. You just stay it. So if I, I'm a traveler, I live in Vegas. I have my own place, for example. Mm -hmm. um, and I 
use couch surfing so that other travelers can come stay uh, in Vegas. And so when you, you so when yeah. you stay somewhere, you'll hope that you exactly. can pay it for it to somebody exactly. else. So it's that's just called couch surfing. You can just use that. But um, I tell people you only need like fifteen hundred or um two two grand if you want to be fancy. Want to be fancy? Yeah. <laughs> for how long? <laughs> to how travel long? for a month. Damn. Okay. And that's one month, and that's a good amount of time. I'll just get a credit card and yeah. just run the bill. You're good. <laughs> come, get, come get the money from it. You'll be in my boat with right. my car. I'm gonna make it happen, and I'm gonna you're gonna hold me to it. But 2018, I'm gonna make it to Europe, and I'm gonna see a bunch of it. Yeah. Um. Closing questions. I want you to imagine there's a picture frame on the okay. wall right there. Ten years from now, you're in it. Mm-hmm. Who else and what do we see in that picture? Um, and I don't want to say who else. Sorry. It could be, <laughs> it could be just you, yeah. but what do we see in that picture frame? Um, ten years. That's ten years. Time. I was just telling my friend I can't even imagine like what in a year is going to bring me, <laughs> let alone ten. Um, let's see. Hopefully in 10 years, I would have been to everywhere in the world. Not even the places I want to go, just everywhere. Just been everywhere. Um, And I think you would see like my mom in it too. Because I really want to take her with me. I think that would be really interesting. And that's like a really big goal for me to be able to take her with me and be in the position where financially I can take care of like the family pretty much. me, Me and my family. Yeah. And just be able to bring them with me yeah and i'm sure she would absolutely love that yeah so you gotta make it happen i spoil her already <laughs> but she would like it <laughs> um where can people find you on social media what's your website yeah. what's the best way to contact you yeah um so my website is dayalary.com instagram is dayalary.com facebook is daya powell i think that's my last name okay um i think that's all youtube is dayalary and my email is in my Instagram, but it's daypowell97 at yahoo.com. Go follow her on IG so yeah. that you can then get the information yeah, exactly. from there. Um, before I ask the last question, mm-hmm. thank you for coming on the podcast. Thank you. Uh, it's really cool to meet somebody like yourself who is only a couple of years younger than me, but is actually like making this happen yeah. uh, and, and actually doing it. So you're clearly a good example of somebody for this podcast. And thank you so much. Uh, I'm sure you're going to keep crushing it. So that's it's just a matter of time and you exploring and finding bigger yeah. opportunities so um it's really dope last question for you mm-hmm. what two to three pieces of advice would you give to somebody that's trying to find their passion or trying to find their purpose and hasn't necessarily found it um i would say like one is get to know yourself figure out what you like not not what everybody else wants you to do but kind of what you want to do don't just do things to please other people so that's one thing um and then try things out like try new things i might not know i'm amazing like olympic swimmer until i go swimming (laughs) i'm horrible at swimming but i don't know that unless i try you know um and i think the last thing is to believe in yourself even if it's something that you fell at you know that you tried you know you put a hundred percent effort into that thing and that's like the most important. You will learn so much, even if you try something. And I've had multiple t- business I've tried, and I know I didn't put 110 percent effort into it, and it failed, and I just didn't get where I needed to be. But I still learned so much, and I I learned that I can now say like, okay, I didn't put effort into it. I didn't even get my business cards out. I had them, and I didn't get them, <laughs> didn't out. Get them out. Yeah. Um. So I think that that's huge. Like, really believe in yourself, and until you can believe in yourself it's not really going to happen. Like you need to really understand that you can do it. Yeah. Just tell yourself that every day. Even if, even if it's a it thought in your mind that, you, mm, I don't know, like just tell yourself you can Remind do it. Remind yourself. Yeah. That could be the quote that you read every morning. Exactly. You I love do it. it. Dale, Lurie, thank you for coming on the podcast. Thank you for having me. It was Absolutely. nice to meet you in Uber. Was, yeah, very nice to meet you in Uber. <laughs> Shout out to Uber. You guys want to sponsor yeah. this. Hit me up. <laughs> we'll catch you guys next time. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like, comment, and subscribe below so you can stay up to date with your favorite being a man. The one, the only, Bob A. As we're dropping videos all the time, this is the Purpose in Eve podcast. Thank you for watching.